everything that created the planets and the stars, the galaxies, that life that flowed into the universe, it's only inside of you right now. If it could create all those things, why couldn't it knock out a tumor, create a new eye, create a new ear, create a new lung? Why could it not? I'm telling you, this just keeps coming up on the inside of me. This is what this last great move of God's going to be all about. This last great, this awakening that's beginning to take place in the body of Christ right now. Understanding who we are and getting so bold about it. If you've seen me, you've seen the Christ. Jesus, thank you for coming. This ministry, moving this thing, that it be global and worldwide in every area, Lord healing like they've never seen, like the voice of healing, Lord, like the 1947 to 1958 healing revivals, the A.A. A. Allens and the, the Jack Coles and the William Branhams. Lord, let this become something that people are saying, oh, look what the Lord has. No, he got on the inside of me. The Christ got on the inside of me. His healing power got on the inside of me. He said, the very same glory you've given me, I have given it unto them so that the world would know that you sent me. We are supposed to be an exact replica of the standard, of the prototype, that we're operating and getting the very same results. Hey everyone, this is Chad Gonzalez. Welcome to tonight's session of Healing Talks. So excited to be with you all and uh, those of you that are joining all over the world, seeing people here from um, Philadelphia, Illinois, Valley Murphy from uh, Illinois, and uh, we've got Luis Lambert from New Zealand, Adrian in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, Tim. Uh, St. Joseph, Missouri. Hey, those books went out today. We made sure and got those out to you. So uh, those are coming to you, Tim. Uh, who else we have? Clint from Chicago. These are all people I'm watching here on uh, YouTube. And So whether you're watching YouTube, Facebook, thanks for joining in. Let us know where you're watching from. And uh, so excited to be with you. I really apologize about last week. We had some things came up and so uh, some technical issues and weren't able to get it up. But we're back tonight and so excited to be with you. Hey, we've got some meetings coming up in June I wanted to let you know about. Uh, let me pull this up on my calendar here. So uh, June 12th, we're going to be in Sulphur Springs, Texas. Uh, so over in the northeast portion of uh, Texas. I will be there on a Sunday uh, in the afternoon. Um, then June uh, 19th, 18th and 19th, we're going to be in Durham, North Carolina. Let me pull this up real quick. I'm going to give you the stuff here. We'll be in Durham, North Carolina. And uh, it is called Kingdom, Kingdom Life Church International or Kingdom Life International Church. One of those. Uh, but Kingdom Life Church there, Durham, North Carolina. So it's going to be on a Saturday and a Sunday. Uh, we're going to have some sessions Saturday afternoon and then Sunday morning. We'll be there on the 18th and 19th. And then uh, June 25th and 26th, we're going to be in Holland, Michigan at Lakeshore Vine or Vineyard Church. And we'll have three sessions that are taking place on that Saturday. And then we'll also have 
uh, the Sunday morning. So that's taking place in June. Got those meetings coming up. I don't have any meetings scheduled for the first weekend of June because that's slicing my anniversary. So uh, we've got to make sure and, and take, <laughs> take care of things and do that right. Uh, so we'll be celebrating 19 years that weekend. And, uh, and then next weekend, I'm actually going to be in Kenya. I'm leaving next week and I'll be in Nairobi, Kenya. And so those of you that are in uh, Kenya, I know we've got a lot of you that watch our healing talks and listen to the podcast. We'd love to see you there in Nairobi. It's going to be for the East Africa Faith Conference uh, that's hosted by uh, Rima Bible Training College right there in Nairobi. They have Vidar and Catherine Lagarde, some great friends of mine, doing a tremendous job there in Kenya. And I think they have like 12 campuses all over the country. And so uh, I've been there. So I think this will be my fifth time to be to Kenya. And so really looking forward to that. Hey, I have some really exciting information I wanted to share with you. We haven't shared it with anybody. Uh, so you guys are the first to know. But so our Healing Academy, we started this, uh, I guess, a little over two years ago, almost three years ago. And when I started that, we put that together very specifically for church small groups. That's what it was for. Uh, actually, my friend Vidar had been kind of pushing me for a couple of years to do something just for churches, some training. And so I started putting that together specifically for small groups. Well, we started having lots of individuals join in on that and doing that on their own and and as you know as you start doing something you start kind of figuring out some direction and and I started seeing okay this is going to be career curriculum we were going to add more to it curriculum for an in-person training type of center and so that was the intention and we're still working toward that that's actually one of the things that we're we're still looking to do in London uh, England I was waiting on travel and everything to kind of chill out some but we're going to be doing that in, in London. Um, but over the last few months, really, the Lord had been dealing with me about even progressing with this more. And so I was planning on doing a volume three and eventually a volume four uh, added on to it. But I began to, to just kind of chew on some of this and, and through just some time of prayer and, and just listen to the Lord about some things. We've decided to make it just a full-fledged online uh, like school. And so it's going to be available starting the week of July 4th. There's going to be six modules to it. So the way that we have, what we have right now, as far as the Healing Academy, we have volume one and volume two. That's going to go and, and strictly be what we originally intended for it to be. It's going to strictly be just for church small groups. So that would be a, a deal for churches. But then everything else is going to be all online. There's going to be quizzes, tests. Uh, everything's going to be available there. We'll still have the paperback books available if you want to get those, but it's going to be legit. I'm really excited about it. And so there's going to be six modules and each module will have uh, between five to ten classes for each module. And it's just going to be really, really nice. Uh, we're, we're really working really hard to get all of this ready and set up for you guys. And so what we're going to do is all of those that have gone through volume one, you've purchased volume one, whether you did the digital version or the physical version, if you've gone through volume one, uh, then uh, you'll be able to have free access to module one of uh, the Healing Academy online. And so I was really excited we were able to get uh, the domain name, thehealingacademy.com. We just got that the other day. And so it's going to be its own site. It's just going to be really good. We also have some other resources that we're working that's going to be made available to that because what we're going to do is not only will the Healing Academy be there with all of those uh, courses and stuff, but we're also going to start making other courses available too. Uh, I've had a lot of people that's messaged me specifically through Healing Talks asking questions about the baptism of the Holy Spirit, things of that. So uh, we're going to start doing some courses on those type of things and there'll be supplements to the healing academy um, we're also working right now on a devotional and in christ devotional on the in christ scriptures working on that and then something i'm really excited about too is we're working on a healing scriptures audio uh recording i was going to say cd but we really really don't use cds much anymore but uh, we're working on a healing scriptures uh, audio recording and we're going to have two different versions of it 
uh, one version is going to be for you to go to sleep to. And so uh, we've already got the music picked out and it's a very, just very soothing kind of ambient type of uh, music that's in the background. So something for you to go to sleep to, uh, just very calming and settling and but just to have those healing scriptures planned. And then we'll have another version that has another type of music, a little bit more upbeat, something that you can listen to on your drive to work, your commute, on the train, whatever it is you're doing. Maybe you're outside cutting grass or doing dishes, whatever. We'll have another version that has a little bit more upbeat type of deal to it. So we've got all those things that are in the process of working. And then actually, um, along with that, we just found out from Sid Ross people that the It's Supernatural show that we filmed a few weeks ago, that'll be actually airing the week of July 4th as well. So lots of great stuff coming up. We're super excited. And we have more meetings coming up in July. Um, uh, July, we're going to be over in Missouri. August, we're going to be over in California and up in um, Oregon. I think we're going to be up in Portland, Salem, some other places over there on the West Coast. So lots of good stuff coming up. And we're so excited about all that the Lord is doing and, and we get to be a part of. So anyway, hey, I wanted to um, I wanted to share something with you. And by the way, we're going to take communion tonight. So I've got my, uh, my, my wafer and my juice here. So you can grab your juice, cracker, another wafer, whatever you're going to use. Um, but I wanted to, I wanted to go over these, some prophecies, so to speak. Uh, and a vision. All of these are regarding the, the last day move of God. And there was one, this was a vision. There's a guy by the name of Tommy Hicks. If you don't know anything about him, I'd encourage you uh, go look him up. But this was a vision that he had in 1961. And it was in regards to the, the last day uh, move. And I'm just going to read this to you. And we'll, um, we, we will make this available. If you don't have this, if you can't find it, we'll make this available on our website. Uh, I'll make sure we have that up. Uh, somebody gets that up here in the next few days. But uh, this was in July 25th, 1961. Okay. And this is what he said. He said, my message begins July 25th, 2.30 in the morning at Winnipeg, Canada. I had barely fell asleep when the vision revelation that God gave to me came before me. The vision came three times exactly in detail the morning of July 25th, 1961. I was so stirred and so moved by the revelation. This has changed my complete outlook upon the body of Christ and the, the end time ministry. The greatest thing that the church of Jesus Christ has, or I'm sorry, the greatest thing that the church of Jesus Christ has ever been given to the church lies straight ahead. He says, a vision appeared to me after I was asleep. I found myself at a very high distance. Where I was, I do not know, but I was looking down upon the earth. And suddenly the whole earth came into view. Every nation, every tongue came before my sight. From the east and the west, north and south, I recognized every country and many cities that I had actually been to. I was almost in fear and trembling as I beheld the sight before me. At that moment, as the earth came into view, it began, began to lightning and thunder. As the lightning flashed over the face of the earth, my eyes went down. I was facing the north, and suddenly I saw what looked like to be a giant. And as I stared and looked at it, I was almost bewildered by the sight. It was so gigantic and so great in stature. His feet seemed to reach the north pole and his head to the south. His arms were stretched from sea to sea. I could not even begin to understand whether this was a mountain or was a giant. But as I watched it, I suddenly beheld that this was a giant, and I could see it struggling for life even to live. The body was covered with debris from head to foot, and at times this great giant would move its body and act as though it was going to rise up. When it did, thousands of little creatures seemed to run away. Hideous-looking creatures would run away from the giant, and when he would become calm, they would come back. And all of a sudden, this great giant lifted his hand toward the heavens, and then lifted his other hand. And when it did, these creatures by the thousands seemed to flee away from the giant and go into the darkness and into the night. Slowly, this great giant began to rise, and as he did, his head and hands went into the clouds. As he arose to his feet, he seemed to have cleansed himself from the debris and the filth that was upon him, and he began to raise his hands into the heavens as though praising the Lord. 
And as he raised his hands into the cloud, suddenly every cloud became silver. The most beautiful silver I've ever seen. And as I watched this, it was so great, I couldn't begin to understand what it all meant. I was so stirred as I watched that I cried unto the Lord and said, Lord, what is the meaning of this? And it felt as if I was actually in the spirit. I could feel the presence of the Lord, even though I was asleep. And from the clouds, suddenly there became great drops of liquid light raining down upon the giant. And slowly this giant began to melt and began to sink, as it were, into the very earth itself. And as he melted, his whole form seemed to have melted upon the face of the earth. And this great rain began to come down and liquid drops of light, as it were, began to flood the very earth itself. As I watched this giant that seemed to melt, suddenly it became millions of people all over the face of the earth. As I beheld the sight before me, people stood up all over the world. They were lifting their hands and praising the Lord. At that very moment, there came a great thunder that seemed to roar from the heavens. I turned my eyes toward the heavens and suddenly I saw a figure in white, glistening white, the most glorious thing I'd ever seen in my life. I didn't see the face, but somehow I knew that it was the Lord Jesus Christ. And as he stretched forth his hand, and as he did, he was stretched forth his hand upon the peoples and the nations of the world, men and women. And as he pointed toward them, this liquid light seemed to flow from his hand into this person, and a mighty anointing came upon them. And those people began to go forth in the name of the Lord. I do not know how long I watched. It seemed as it went into days and weeks and months. And I beheld Christ as he, began, as he continued to stretch forth his hand. But then there was a tragedy. Many people that he stretched forth his hand to, they refused the anointing of God and the call of God. I saw men and women that I knew, people I felt certainly would receive the call. But as he stretched forth his hands toward this one and that one, they bowed their heads and began to back away. And to each of those who seemed to bow down and back away, they went into darkness. Blackness seemed to swallow them everywhere. I was bewildered as I watched it, but these people that he had anointed, hundreds of thousands of people all over the world, Africa, Asia, Russia, China, America. The anointing of God was upon these people as they went forth in the name of the Lord. I saw these men and women as they went forth. They were ditch diggers, washerwomen, rich men, poor men. I saw people who were bound with paralysis and sickness, blindness and deafness. And as the Lord stretched forth his hand to give them the anointing, they became well. They became healed and they went forth. And this is the miracle of it. This is the glorious miracle that the people would stretch forth their hand exactly as the Lord did. And it seemed that there was this same liquid fire that seemed to be in their hand. And as they stretched forth their hand and they said, according to my word, be thou made whole. And as these people continued in this mighty end time ministry, I didn't fully realize what it was. And I looked to the Lord and I said, what is the meaning of this? And he said, this is that, that I will do in the last days. I will restore all that the canker worm, the palmer worm, the caterpillar, I will restore what they have destroyed. This my people in the end time shall go forth. As a mighty army, they'll sweep over the face of the earth. And I was, as I was at a great height, I watched these people as they were going to and fro from the face of the earth. Suddenly there was a man in Africa, and in a moment he was transported by the Spirit of God, and he is in Russia. Or then he'd be in China or America or some other place. All over the world these people went. And they went through fire and pestilence and famine. But neither fire or persecution, nothing could stop them. Angry mobs would come to them with swords and guns, but like Jesus, they passed through the multitude and they could not find them. They went forth in the name of the Lord and everywhere they stretched forth their hand, the sick were healed, the blind eyes were open. There was no long prayer. Listen to this. There was no long prayer. One of the things that seemed after I'd reviewed the vision so many times in my mind and thought about it so many times, I never saw a church. I never saw or heard about a denomination. But it was people going in the name of the Lord of hosts. Hallelujah. As they marched forward, everything they did as the ministry of Christ. In the end time, these people were ministering to the multitudes over the face of the earth. Tens of thousands, even millions, seemed to come to the Lord Jesus as these people stood forth and gave the message of the kingdom, of a coming kingdom in this last hour. Praise the Lord. He said it was so glorious. God's going to give the world a demonstration in the last hour that the world has never seen before. 
These men and women are all of various walks of life. Degrees will mean nothing. I saw these workers going forth all over the earth. When one would seem to stumble and fall, another would come and pick them up. There was no big I and little you, but every mountain was brought low, every valley was exalted, and they all seemed to have one thing in common. There was a divine love that seemed to flow forth from these people as they went together, as they worked together and lived together. Jesus Christ was the theme of their life. And as I watched from the very heaven itself, there was times when great deluges of this liquid light. I'm going to keep reading this, but do you, do you see he keeps talking about this liquid light, this liquid fire? Friends, this is the life of God that we keep talking about. We keep emphasizing. But notice this. This is back in the 60s. He saw this vision. Great deluges of this liquid light light seemed to fall upon great congregations and that congregation would lift their hands and praise God for hours and days as the Spirit of God came upon them. There was no ending to it. And again, as these people were going forth about the face of the earth, great persecution seemed to come from every place. Suddenly there was another loud clap of thunder that seemed to resound around the world and I again heard the voice. The voice said, this is my people, this is my beloved bride. And when the voice spoke, I looked upon the earth and I could see the lakes and mountains and the graves were open and people from all over the world, the saints of all ages seemed to be rising and they rose from the graves. Suddenly all these people came from every direction and they seemed to again be forming again this gigantic body. And as the dead in Christ seemed to be rising first, I could hardly comprehend it because it was so marvelous. But this bodily sudden began to form and take shape again. And it took shape again in the form of this mighty giant. But this time it was different. It was arrayed in the most beautiful, gorgeous white. Its garments were without spot, wrinkle, as the body began to form. And I, I could read a whole lot more. It goes on quite a bit. But I want you to notice this. He was talking about this great body, this giant. And all of a sudden it began to arise. And these great drops of liquid light began to fall out of heaven onto that and then that giant, it, it turned into millions of people. Friends, this, this last great move of God that we've, we've talked about for years and people have prayed and fasted for and, and we're, we're beginning to hear more, more talk about this, this, this last great move, this awakening, this last great revival, however you want to refer to it. This is why I'm so passionate about what we do and that I very much endeavored to make sure that what we're doing, we keep the emphasis on Jesus and not the person behind the pulpit, not the person on the stage. Our, our focus is twofold uh, on Jesus, so that what we do flows from Jesus, but that we also focus on what we do as far as the everyday believer doing the works of Jesus, not the person with the degree not the person uh, that's, that's necessarily maybe been to Bible school, uh, that we don't put the focus on the, the person that has the title or the fivefold ministry, but we put the focus on the believer. Jesus said in John 14, 12, whoever believes in me will do the very same works. And this, this has been our focus, and this is very much my focus I, I wrote this down the other day. I was I was spending some time praying, and the Lord told me this, and I wrote it down. But He said this: "There's going to be a great reset. There's going to be a great reset, and it's going to be a a, a reset not only of natural things." Uh, but it's also going to be a reset of the church. I truly believe there's going to be a reset in regards to our economy and things of that nature, but there's also going to be a reset in the area of the church. And what I mean by it is this. For far too long, we have looked at the prior generation. It's always been the prior generation that we've looked to kind of as our standard for Christianity, for life, for miracles, 
Um, you know, those, those that are around my age bracket and, and a little older, um, you know, we look at those people kind of like the, say like the Oral Roberts and the Kenneth Hagans and uh, those, you know, the Catherine Kuhlmans, kind of those in that arena. And then, you know, those that are, you know, maybe they're uh, 60s, 70s, 80s, kind of look back more toward those ones, those ministers that came along in the 40s and 50s, the Healing Revival, the Jack Coes, A.E. Allens, you know, people in, in that regard. And, and then we also look at people like Smith Wigglesworth and John G. Lake and E.W. Kenyon, um, William Seymour. We look at those people in, in the last century. And we look at those people and, and we hold them in such high regard, and, <clears throat> and we should. But you have to realize none of those people or none of those people are our standard. They're not our standard for what's available in Christ. They show us some things that are available. And thank God for the the, the trails that they blazed and the revelation that they brought. But none of those individuals had it all. None of those individuals had all the revelation. Um, none of those individuals were, were walking in in all of the power that was available. Now, they may have stepped into it at, at times, um, but they're not our standard. I believe that there, there's a, a time coming very quickly in which there's going to be a reset for the church in which uh, a remnant of us finally get to the point where we make Jesus our standard, where we make Jesus the, the standard for Christianity, where we make Jesus the standard of what's possible. And yet, not Jesus who walked on the earth, but the glorified Christ. You see, we're not one with the Jesus who walked on the earth. We're one with the glorified Christ as he is so are we, not as he was. Think, think on that. I mean, it would be great in one sense. You look at what Jesus accomplished on the earth and the miracles, and yeah, that would be great. But you know what? It's even better. It's not as he was, so are we in this world. No, no, no. As he is, so are we in this world. If you want to know what your life is to be like, Look at Jesus right now. Look at his relationship with the Father right now. Look at what he can accomplish right now. Thank God for what he did, but look at what he can do now. And he is our standard. He is our standard. I want to read this, this scripture to you, and then I'm going to read something else. This was out of... Um, This was out of the, the Passion Translation. Where I put this. Yeah. This is Colossians chapter 1, verse 28, 29, the Passion Translation. Apostle Paul said, My passion, inspiration, and ministry is to labor with tireless intensity with his power flowing through me to present every believer the revelation of being his perfect one in Jesus Christ. And, and when I saw that, that really just struck home with me because that's really what, what we're all about and what we're endeavoring to do. We've talked so much about the life of God flowing through us and in us. And and yeah, you know, we're, be, we're beginning to get known for the healing ministry and stuff. But in reality, what we're really pushing is not just the healing. What we're really pushing is the perfection and the union with the Christ because of what salvation and redemption truly provided for us. And healing is just one of the byproducts. And it's in a very important piece, though, because I, I truly believe that, that healing, those two areas, we've talked about it before, but those two areas of healing 
and the casting out of devils, that those two areas are going to be the areas, uh, the, the two areas of prominence in this last great move of God, which I truly believe we're, we're, we're kind of tiptoeing in right now. But we've ha we have to get to this place that Jesus is the standard. Jesus said in John 14, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. He said, the works that I do, they prove that I'm one with him. The Bible says that Jesus, he's the firstborn among many brethren. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17 says, we're one spirit with the Lord. Jesus is our standard. Jesus said in John 14, 6, I am the way, I'm the truth, I'm the life. That word truth in the Greek means reality. I am reality. I am the way. Jesus is not only the way to the Father, he's also the way in which we can live. He's the way in which we can fellowship with God. He's the way in which we can take authority over Satan. He's the way in which we can take authority over the curse. He's the way in which we can walk through those, walk past those, walk around those who would try to hurt us and persecute us and, and maybe even kill us. He is the example on all levels. He's the example and what can actually be done even in the area of nature, if need be, if that natural laws need, need to be circumvented for a situation. Jesus is the standard. He's the standard for what can be done. He's a standard for what can be done. And so I just want to encourage you uh, over the next few next few days, be very intentional and be be very purposeful in, in taking a, uh, a, a heavenly perspective on circumstances, whether it be finances, relational things, uh, health issues, be very intentional in the way that I'm looking at it and, and, and analyze it, what I'm seeing right now. Am I seeing it? Am I seeing it through cursed eyes? Am I seeing this situation through the eyes of the curse? Or am I seeing this situation through the eyes of the blessing? Am I seeing it through the eyes of death or am I seeing it through the eyes of life? A am I seeing it the way Jesus would see it? Or am I seeing it the way just a, a natural uh, human would see it because the way that we see it is going to determine how we respond and I don't know about you but I'm just at the place in my life I want results and I'm not satisfied with half the people in the auditorium getting healed or even 90% I want to see every single person that walked in sick I want to see every single person walk out healed we need to take a hold of the fact Jesus standard in those times it says, and he healed them all. Well, that should become the standard in our churches, don't you think? That we become just so full of him, so conscious of him. Not our abilities and our talents and our programs, but we become so aware of him, so full of him, that people can't even come to in our church and hold on to their sickness disease and things just begin to fall off just because we're carrying so much of him and we're making him our, our standard. There's just so much to it. And I've been, I've really been chewing on this the last few days and just been a little overwhelmed uh, with the magnitude of it. Uh, he's just so good. But I'm telling you, there's a great reset coming. And it's going to come because of people like you and me deciding that, you know what, enough's enough. I'm tired of playing church. I'm tired of playing games. And I'm tired of making excuses for why we're not seeing results as we should. I'm going to go after it. And I'm going to begin to use my imagination to begin to see myself the way that he sees me. If, if you've been struggling in, in some areas in, in your body, sickness, disease, pain, I want to encourage you. Start taking 5, 10, 15 minutes a day and just close your eyes and allow the Holy Spirit to lead you and guide you with your imagination and begin to see yourself the way that you should be. Begin to see yourself the way that Jesus died for you to be. Begin to see yourself the way that actually God sees you 
Remember, he sees you in Christ. Well, if you're in him, you can't be crippled. You can't have heart issues. You can't have kidney issues. You can't have cancer in him. God sees you in him. He sees you through the blood. And so you need to see yourself that way. If you're dealing with financial issues and problems and stuff, you need to start seeing yourself as rich. You know, one of the things that I do, you know, Lacey and Jake say they sneeze or I sneeze. Instead of saying, bless you, I say, you're healed and rich. And I yell it out loud too, even in embarrassing. I'll say it around anybody. Hachu, you're healed and rich. I'll just say it. Why? I'm blessed. I'm blessed. But we need to start thinking that way and seeing that way and using our imagination on purpose in those arenas. I've been spending time the last few nights, even in my prayer time, Lacey and Jake go to bed. I've been coming here in my study and just spending time praying, praying in the Spirit, using my imagination, and just been having a wonderful time with the Lord and Him showing me some things and actually gave me some direction in regards to the Healing Academy and how we're going to set it up. And and just I'm so, so excited about uh, what's coming up this year and, and what you and I what we, what we get to be a part of in this last great, wonderful move of God. Uh, I'll read this one last prophecy. This was by um, Smith Wigglesworth. And a lot of you have heard me talk about this one before. And uh, I'll read this and then we'll, we'll take communion together. Smith Wigglesworth, he prophesied this in 1947, right before he went to be the Lord. He said, during the next few days, there's going to be two distinct moves of I'm sorry, during the next few decades, there will be two distinct moves of the Holy Spirit across the church in Great Britain. The first move will affect every church that's open to receive it, and it will be characterized by the restoration of the baptism and the gifts of the Spirit. The second move of the Holy Spirit will result in people leaving historic churches and planting new churches. Well, we saw this, this happen, you know, the charismatic renewal, the 60s and 70s, and people were receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit in the 80s. Uh, the, the denominations, people coming out of the denominations and starting these new churches. He said, in the duration of each of these moves, people who are involved will say, this is a great revival. But the Lord says, no, this is neither a great revival, but there are steps toward it. When the new church phase is on the wane, uh, there will be evidence in the churches of something that's not been seen before, a coming together of those with an emphasis on the word and an emphasis on the spirit. When the word and the spirit come together, there will be the biggest move of the Holy Spirit that the nations and indeed the world will have ever seen. It will mark the beginning of a revival that will eclipse anything that's been witnessed within these shores, even the Wesleyan and Welch revivals of former years. The outpouring of God's Spirit will flow over from the United Kingdom to mainland Europe, and from there will begin a missionary move toward the ends of the earth. Even Smith Wigglesworth, before he went to home to be with the Lord, prophesied about the charismatic renewal, about that time in the 80s of people coming out of the denominational churches and starting these independent, interdenominational, non-denominational churches. And he said, when that was on the wane, then we would begin to see this emphasis of not only the word, which we've seen that for decades now, an emphasis not only the word, but also an emphasis on the spirit and those two things coming together. And from that would be this great last move, this great revival that we've all been praying and talking about and, and singing about and all those type of things. And so the wonderful thing is you and me, we get to be a part of that. And yet, if you're like me, I'm not going to be satisfied with just sitting in the stands and watching it. I'm going to be on the field and we're going to be doing this together. And so that's one thing that we're uh, not only looking to do with our with the Healing Academy online, not only training people, but also beginning to uh, build a community, beginning to build a movement where this is about the everyday believer going out and doing the works of Jesus with perfection and getting results just like he would. Praise God. Hey, let's go ahead and take communion together, receive communion together. Whatever you've got there, your chip cracker. And uh, <clears throat> praise the Lord. It's always just a good reminder of what Jesus did for us. Thank you, Jesus, for your precious body and your blood that you poured out for us. Jesus, I thank you for the sacrifice that you made, that we would not only be forgiven of our sin, but also healed of our diseases. And I thank you for making us righteous, making us holy, 
making us pure exactly in the way that you are. We love you and praise you and thank you for all you've done for us. We receive of your forgiveness and we receive of your healing. In Jesus' mighty name, let's go ahead and eat. Praise you, Jesus. Well, friends, we love you. Thank you so very much, those of you that are partners with us. Thank you, thank you, thank you for all that you do, for praying for us, encouraging us. Thank you for your uh, financial seeds that you sow. Uh, we count that as just precious seed. And we declare an abundant harvest on each and every single one that we receive. So many great, wonderful things coming up uh, for the last uh, portion of the year. Some great projects and great stuff going on. And we're so grateful we get to do it with you. So, hey guys, have a wonderful week. God bless you. Remember in Christ, we always win. We'll talk to you next Tuesday for another session of Healing Talks. Bye-bye.